Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today we are discussing whether or not believers should wear scripture on their person. Should you put it on a hat, a t-shirt, uh, your bow tie, your gloves, on the back of your shirt, the front of your shirt? Should you wear scripture? Um, I was sent an email last week, and it, it quickened me, and it, and it caused me to ponder um, because I personally do not. I never have, and I likely never will. Will. Um, as a public charitable organization of never quit, never give up, I wear never quit, never give up everywhere I go. It speaks to people regardless of race, religion, age, uh, uh, race. It doesn't matter. Never give up, never quit. But I want you to know, my friends, when we overtly put scripture and things like repent or perish, heaven or hell, um, different things like this. Follow me close as I, as I give you this illustration. We can do more harm in the harvest than good. And this is why. People automatically are going to get on their good behavior. Okay, if you are in a workplace and you always wear repent or perish, I'm saved, um, are you, you know, things like this, friends, you more likely are going to alienate your co-workers. <laughs> and some people be wondering why their co-workers just don't like them because you can't talk about religion, but you go, you go wear it. Go to hell or go to heaven. Which one? You, you wearing this stuff at your workplace. You ain't saying nothing to nobody. Matter of fact, some people just rude to their coworkers. You ain't saying nothing, but you got it on your t-shirt real big. <laughs> All sinners go to hell. People are doing this. Let me tell you, friends, when there is a war, you are not going to overtly tell your enemy who you are. A Green Beret assimilates. When they are sent on these missions to remove an enemy, they are not coming into that city, that community, saying, I am Green Beret Sharon Johnson. You go respect it, <laughs> right? They, you, that's not how the military, follow me, friends, that's not how they do it, right? Camouflage, right? Camo was created as a tactic to, to cause the, the, the soldiers, the ground soldiers, to assimilate and not be easily spotted, whether in the, the jungle or wherever they are, so you're not easily spotted, right? So we want to be careful that we don't give people the wrong impression because some people think that you being, quote, holier than thou, you, you, you're putting it out. But you the same one that won't even speak to your coworkers. You the same one that thump at them and 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 in your own funny kind of way you condemn them all to hell. Mm -hmm. But you 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 ain't saying nothing. No, you putting it all over, right? Your desk is filled. Your little cubicle. You got crosses. You got Bible verses everywhere. But you don't talk to nobody, friends. This is not wisdom. It is a total contradiction of wisdom because wisdom tells you how to do the thing. If you are in a hostile environment with heaven or hell, repent or perish, I'm saved. You, friend, no. Mm -hmm. What about some kindness? What about some, some good morning? And then go to your desk and meditate as you do your key, right? So some people... I'm not saying all, but some people are using all of this external piety to really be condescending. I'm not saying everybody. Street preachers, when we're out on the streets, those of us that go into the highways and hedges, we don't want to go like that because we did, follow me, follow the illustration. When you're battling for souls, you want to kind of lay low. You speak it out, but I'd rather you get up close to me and have a word for me than to be a far off and I got time to wiggle away from you because I'm about to, you know, yeah, I love God because I see your t-shirt. I see the repent or, you know, go to or perish. I see it. I'm going to straighten it up. I'm going to dodge you. I'm going to tell you I love God.
of God. You just met me. I see you out on the street with your repentant parents and you're trying to strike a conversation. I'm going to give you my best line. So a lot of people are able to fake you out because you setting it out. Friends, do we actually think that Jesus would put scripture on his t-shirt? Do we think he would? Because that's how we really get some of these questions answered. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus have scripture on him? Would he put, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand? No, the Bible calls for us to be a witness. We use our speech. We use our mouth. We use our speech to preach. We open our mouths and carry this great gospel. That's right. So friends, when we're trying to replace the gospel with speaking to other forms of communicating, which can give the impression of negativity, that's right. It's, it's like, really? It's, we have, you know, we at the family picnic. Here you come repent or perish. You know, your whole family is heathens. You know, all of them unsaved. Here you come, heaven or hell. I'm saved. You say, really? Come on, brothers and sisters. Mm -mm. The Bible says, be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Is it wise to set our piety out like this? If you go preach, preach, because he called us to use speech. The mouthpiece, that's what you call to use. Amen? That's right. So we need to be careful, brothers and sisters, and we need to ask ourselves why. Why am I putting John 3, 16? Really, when I'm supposed to be speaking by the, the leading of the Spirit of God to the people that I encounter. I'm not trying to put on no airs, no spiritual airs, mm -mm, because I'm going to sit back because you got to remember when you're in a war and you're trying to get the enemy, you you stay. That's why we got camo. That's why we got uh, secret servicemen. You got people, they ain't trying to be all overt with it. Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. Let us ponder these things. Would Jesus move like that? Would John the Baptist have on a t-shirt that says repent or perish? No, John the Baptist was speaking preaching. He was proclaiming the kingdom of God is at hand, right? So let us just ponder it, brothers and sisters, because we can do more harm than helping by overtly showcasing our piety. And as I close this exhortation, I want us to remember what Jesus told the disciples about the Pharisees and Sadducees, who he said they like to walk around in their long flowing robes showcasing what piety it's the same type of principle brothers and sisters we want to lean back walk with jesus i ain't got to prove to you nothing i ain't got to prove to nobody that i walk with my lord that i'm walking with god i ain't got to prove nothing amen but when it's time to speak because the the holy spirit he he told Jesus told the disciples, don't take a script because the Holy Spirit is going to come up on your speech when you open up your mouth. When you open up your mouth, he or she, he would say, that has an ear to hear. Let them hear. So that means speech, speech. We don't have to plaster scripture. No, friends, and I'm going to say this as I close with one more last thought. The word of God, if you're not careful, you bring it into almost a common place where it's so common. There's no sacredness about any of it because you got it. It's just everywhere. But where it's supposed to be and do its best work. Oh, where is my? I got my prop. I got a prop. I got a prop. Is in your heart. That's right. God wants you to eat it. Get it in your heart. And as he see fit by the leading of the spirit, you will speak. You don't have to showcase the piety. Amen. I believe enough has been said. Till next time, hide the word in thine heart.
Amen. Till next time, God bless.